Hi there guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Cave Story. I'm Kirby Viper 93 you can call me KB if you like. In the last episode, we got through a large portion of the bushlands very, very quickly, after not a whole lot of progress in the episode before. Uh, right now, we do have a bomb, which we can use to go and blow up the door, where, if you'll remember, that guy was sort of, uh, trapped. So here we go, let's go warn him first. Bomb's ready. So we place it, and blow the door right off its hinges. And it looks like we were saving Kazuma this entire time. How awesome is that? Well, I mean, we knew that, because Sue told us, you know, that was, that was Kazuma. We just didn't know it outright, that's all. Kazuma Sakamoto. All right, so now we have a last name. That's presumably that's Sue's last name as well. Um, apparently, he escaped from the doctor and was teleported here. And being locked up really didn't help the situation anymore. He was already a prisoner with the doctor. So, you know, there's that. <sighs> Alright, well, I'm not gonna really read or react to much of this, because, I mean, you guys have eyes and a brain. I'm not gonna, like... I'm not gonna deign to try and explain this to you. I mean, I'm not gonna condescend. You guys are intelligent. But apparently this guy, Professor Booster, did Kazuma call him? Apparently he recognized me, even though we never met before, and he just said we never met before. <sighs> Alright, so, red flower. see, red flowers again. I told you, red flowers are important in this game. They are a major plot point. War. Uh-oh. Hmm. This game is very purposely mysterious. It's Pixel did a very good job of setting up the story in such a way that absolutely nothing is explained at first and you're completely in the dark. <laughs> so, I mean, it's like it's just it's very well thought out and it actually coming up in a bit here, we will find out exactly what's been going on. But in the meantime, Kazuma and Professor Booster are going to take this uh, thing here. It looks kind of like a bike hover bike. Dude, I want one of those. Maybe not in pink. Oh god, it won't stop. Alright, well, they're going to the other end of Bushlands, so rather than show you this whole backtracking, which you've seen before, I'm just going to meet you guys at the teleporter. Huh. It's like Kazuma crashed the bike. Well, I mean, you gotta stop it somehow, right? Okay, well, there's really not a whole lot else we can do in the Bushlands. In fact, there's seriously nothing. So let's just uh, let's go back to Arthur's house. Wow, that got heavy quick. Hmm. <laughs> Doctor's like a devil. Yeah, he's uh, he's not quite a devil. He's, he's just kind of like one. You know, he's, just, he's like a devil. Oh man. All right, so now we know exactly what it is the red flowers do and what the doctor's plans are. But we still don't know, have any idea who these people are, what their relation is to the doctor, who we are, or where we are. <sighs> I'm glad they let Sue out, though. I mean, keeping her imprisoned really wasn't helping anybody. There's King. He doesn't look happy about anything. Fuck you guys. Yeah, he's, just, he's really not a, a friend of yours. What the fuck? He locked you up, you idiot. Jesus. Alright, so we're back. We can talk to people. Good work. Bike's a complete wreck. I noticed that. Thanks. Dr. Scheme is moving along his plan. What? Okay, we've got some idea of what his scheme is, but what exactly do you plan to do about it? Yeah, Turco's a weapon of death. would be kind of sad. Okay, well, you talk to Sue, really, to get things going. So, while this runs, I'm just gonna sort of, um... Get into the god backup. I hope that didn't show up in the recording. Holy piss if it does. So, sorry. Uh, uh, while this cutscene runs, I'm going to talk a little bit about how we got to this point. Um, I almost was not able to record right now because um, my adapter, I have an N64 controller that I play with and an adapter that lets me plug it into the computer, for those of you who weren't aware. Um, my adapter, for some reason, it just like Windows would not recognize the adapter so I like I restarted my computer I tried everything I could think of I even tried the old Nintendo standby blown in the 
blowing in a little connector and try and get things to work, and it didn't. So I just, like, want, like out of desperation one last time, I unplugged it, plugged it back in, and magically it worked. <sighs> okay, to recap, we are apparently the only person who can really um, help to fight the doctor's plans. We're the only one equipped for it. And we're we're an, a re, we're a robot. We are an armed recon robot. Our, that explains literally nothing. <laughs> but at least we now have some idea of who we are and what we're doing on this island. We were dispatched about ten years ago for whatever reason. I guess are these the same robots that were just like killing Amiga left and right? I don't know. Ah, anyway, we're connected to the sand zone, which is apparently where the red flower seeds are located. And Booster at least said please this time, so maybe we will help him out. First thing we're going to do, though, is we're going to save, because I don't want to have to go through all of that cutscene shit again in case I die. Alright, so yes, it's a teleporter, and the next zone available to us is the sand zone. The sand zone is probably my least favorite area in the game, and you'll see why in a moment. But the music is kind of cool, actually. Who are you? You've, you've got like a little earpiece just like I do. Are you a robot too? Huh. Okay, well, so we got this blonde girl who apparently recognized us and did not... was not happy to see us for whatever reason. But this is the sand zone. It is very, um... sandy. So, all you gotta do really is climb around up here. And then you wanna go this way. You can go to the right if you want to, but it really, it's... It's better practice just to go this way. So, there's this, this blonde girl with a few Mamiga children, it looks like. They're, they don't look fully grown just yet. Hey! Look, a visitor after such a long time. What? Um, what? I... Okay. I, I know this. I'm... Oh, shit. Okay. Um, so, it looks like we picked a fight completely by accident against Blondie and, uh these Mumiga for some reason. Um, I'm going to tell you right now, just do not use the missile launchers against her. They, it, like, the missiles don't work. Fireball is actually, as, I've, as you've seen before, is an incredibly effective weapon against basically everybody early on. Yeah, gotcha. We've been defeated. No, and if you had listened to me when I told you that in the first place, this whole fight would definitely, would not have even happened. Yes, we're on the Mumiga side. We're trying to we're trying to figure out exactly what's going on around here. <sighs> All right, Curly Brace. Nice to meet you. I'm quote, although I don't know that. Oh well, it's thrashed pretty badly. Okay, so this is the first major weapon trade you can make. I'm saying no initially, just so I can save and <laughs> not have to go through a whole lot more. After I show it off. Um, first thing, real quick though, is if you jump up here, there's a secret compartment. You can go ahead and check your map. There's like a whole... I need the polar star to be able to navigate. There's like a... Damn. There's like a whole... Uh, like a piping system almost. Up against the walls. And there is actually a pretty neat secret, even if a bit perverted. You can tell we're at the bottom there if you look very closely. And there's like a short little alcove right here. See, we're down here, and if you just make a short hop up, now we're here. Press down, and you find Curly's panties. <clears throat> yeah. So, <laughs> there's that. Uh, in the original game, it served no purpose, just like uh, Chaco's Rouge. However, in Cave Story Plus, that finding those secret underwear is actually the way to unlock a mode called Curly Story, which is uh, exactly the same as the main game, except you get to play as Curly, and Curly gets a bit more dialogue. Uh, Alright, so, first of all, you saw Curly had a machine gun on her, and she's, for some reason, she's willing to take the weaker weapon. She's willing to take the Polar Star off your hands and trade it for the machine gun. We're going to take the machine gun, just for now, just so I can show it to you. I probably will show you every weapon. Uh, this is another one with limited ammo, and another one that also recharges on its own. Uh, the thing that's great about the machine gun is that, I mean, aside from doing a pretty decent amount of damage in a short amount of time, is that uh, the level 
3 machine gun actually offers kind of a, like a hover sort of deal when you aim it down. So I'm just going to level this up real quick and just show it off to you guys. Here we have the level 2 Polar Star, which does considerably more damage at once. And here we have the level 3 machine gun, which functions as something of a boost as long as you're aiming down and you have ammo. It's pretty cool. It can actually be very handy in um, upcoming parts of the game. But overall, when you consider that you can trade the Polar Star later on for an even more useful weapon than the machine gun, I would say that the trade is not worth it. Uh, you're more than welcome to use the machine gun if you like, just know that doing so actually uh, limits your weapon options later on in the game. And trust me, the weapons later on are much more useful than the machine gun, especially considering the items that you get. But I digress, I will meet you guys right back here with the Polar Star. Okay, and we are back to the sand zone with the Polar Star. This time we are actually going to move forward instead of just grinding forever in that little vertical hallway. Uh, looks like there could be something cool down there. Um, here we have... I forget what the fuck that guy's called. But you, you shoot him, and he splits into a whole bunch of smaller ones. Those are really good for uh, grinding for experience, because with all the little ones, they just... Like they just give you a crap ton. Uh, you do want to watch out. You see those little sandy areas down at the bottom there, and even if you don't, I mean, you'll see them in a second. Good God, I don't know why it's lagging up like that. That's crazy. Okay, well. Ow. See, there's a sand croc right there, which, if you step on the grass, will take a bite right out of you. Uh, the best way to take care of those, let's get rid of that guy first, is to shoot some fireballs in there and walk right in and. Watch him just eat, eat flame. That was terrible. That was like just a horrible, cheesy action movie hero guy line. I don't know. There's really not a whole lot to say about the sand zone. I, like I said, it's my least favorite area in the game. Uh, we haven't gotten to the reason why yet, but once we do, I will be sure to notify you. Oop! I'm on the missile launcher. The missile launcher is not what I wanted. I wanted the Polar Star. And why do I keep leveling up and leveling down? What the, what the actual fuck? <sighs> In this video, I am uh, premiering the Cave Story font. I actually... Uh, hmm. I actually went into the, uh, the game files and tried to just copy that over into Windows. Unfortunately, Windows only takes uh, true type fonts. I'm talking about fonts right now. <laughs> Windows only takes... Um, true type fonts which are a TTF file and in the game data it's actually a um damn it continuing on now that you've seen what the um the death and game over screen sounds like sounds looks sounds too I guess you didn't get to hear the kind of sad game over music stop using your fucking missiles you idiot um anyway fonts because that is just such an exciting topic for everybody. Um, the font type in the game file is actually a .ttf, or a, a .fnt. Windows only takes .ttf. That's, that was the problem. So I actually sort of had to take the sample file and recreate the font just for you guys. I'm far too dedicated. Uh, hopefully it looks good though. But if you come up here, you can see like these paw blocks are kind of transparent, which is pretty, oh god, pretty cool, and up here there is a hidden save disk, which we're going to use as a checkpoint because this video is far too long, even after all the cutting I'm going to have to do. So thank you all for watching, I'm Kirby Viper 93 and I'll see you guys in the next episode of Let's Play Cave Story.